Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 15 Paul Bunyan's Last Exploits Part 3 Everything went all right until Babe at the head of the procession, started up the steep slope across on the other side of the valley. Not nearly all the other oxen had as yet come across the crest of the first mountains, and so here they were, a line of them from the mountain top on the one side, across the valley, and now starting up the mountain on the other side. And that is where the accident happened. Babe always worked much faster going uphill than he did in any other way. And now, with the long, steep slope ahead of him, he speeded up for all he was worth. Before anyone could stop him, he had stretched out that line of oxen high up in the air, tight from the crest of one mountain range to that of the other across the valley. There they hung, just like clothes on a line, and before the great blue ox could be made to back up and lower them to the ground, every ox in the string had been strangled. It is said that Paul's crews were fed on beef for a long time after that. So, Babe continued to do all the hauling alone after that until several years later, when suddenly he began to lose all of his old-time energy and interest in his tremendous tasks. His appetite also faded, and he showed in other ways that old age was upon him. This was not surprising, for the huge animal was more than a hundred years old and had been constantly doing the heaviest kind of labor ever since he was a calf. Paul saw to it that the great blue ox was given the very best of attention, but all efforts were unavailing toward saving his life. After his death, his ribs were used, so some stories tell us, to form the sides of a big locomotive roundhouse in Seattle. Paul would hardly have allowed the remains of his devoted pet to come to so sordid an end, however and the story that says that the Olympian Mountains are the burial mound of Babe is probably the correct one. Not long after this, Mrs. Paul also passed away. The big logger mourned his double loss greatly, and it seemed from that time on he began to lose his interest in the things he used to do with so much energy and ambition. He had already begun to get very much disgusted over some of the newfangled methods which were being introduced into the woods, replacing some of the better old-fashioned ideas about logging which he had developed. So it wasn't very long before he began to get rid of all his business interests and at last retired from all further lumbering activity. Having too many people around always irritated Paul, except when he was in a logging camp, and the people about him were his own men. Now even the woods were beginning to get crowded, for many lumbermen were starting operations in the western forests as well as among those still standing further east, and Paul felt that his place was taken by others. With so many trying to do the work which he had done alone and on such a big scale in the olden days, his services were no longer needed. Taking only his fore-and-aft moose terrier, Elmer, and his guns with him, Paul Bunyan one night slipped away from all men who knew him and went far into the thickest woods. There, in the heart of the wildest country that he could find, he put up his shanty, and there 
he still lives all alone except for his dog. Men say that he can never die until the last tree is cut down, and that until such a time comes, Paul Bunyan and his lone companion will continue to roam the forests. Once in a while, he and Elmer may appear almost any place where there are trees, but as they are always going at a furious pace, it takes sharp eyes to see them at all. They are always running at great speed, chasing down the wild game that is their food. And often, when the winter winds blow harshly, whistling through the trees and moaning down chimneys and around the corners of houses, woodsmen say that these sounds are made by Paul Bunyan calling to his dog as they rush along on their endless hunting. The End Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end.